everyone welcome to this new episode of analyzing stories today i'm gonna analyze this uh the presentation the tap talk by roman mars about city flags and what makes city flags so horrible or so incredibly beautiful to him at least um so we're gonna take a look at his talk it's a very very popular talk i had some requests about this one so i figured Let's go and analyze it and see what all the fuss is about. Um, I've uh, chosen a few fragments of the, a few snippets of the presentation to take a look at with you and to see, you know, the good, but also the critical, because, you know, that's the way we go. We also want to learn something from it. All right, so um, I'm going to start sharing that with you for a second. Uh, let me see. Okay. So let's take a look at the first one. If it will load. So this presentation is about flags and about city flags in particular. And he uh, looks at a few flags to see, you know, what is so good or what is so horribly bad about these flags. And this is the this is introduction. There we go. I know what you're thinking, but why does that guy get to sit down? That's because this is radio. Okay, so his introduction is, I know what you're thinking. Why does this guy get to sit down? Most of the time, I would tell my clients to never, ever say that. Don't assume anything about what your audience is thinking. Don't make assumptions because if you're wrong, then you lose them. You lose them right away. Now, if you say, I know what you're thinking, and the audience is like, no, I wasn't thinking that. What's this guy about? What is he going on about? I wasn't, I don't think you know me. But in this particular instance, that is exactly what I was thinking. So, you know, it worked here. But let me know if you were thinking the same thing when you first saw this. Um, if you also were wondering, why the heck is he sitting down and everyone else always has to stand? Okay. Second part. Um, he says it himself. You just heard it. He says, this is radio. So this is not your average presentation. He does something else here. He works with fragment, like different sound snippets and he interviewed someone about flags and he um, takes uh, little bits and pieces of that interview and puts that into his talk. So he really works with, uh, with his equipment, with his radio equipment here. Um, but listen to this. It's about a little less than a, a, little less than a minute, but listen. That's because this is radio. I tell radio stories about design, and I report on all kinds of stories, buildings and toothbrushes, mascots, wayfinding and fonts. My mission is to get people to engage with the design that they care about so they begin to pay attention to all forms of design. When you decode the world with design intent in mind, the world becomes kind of magical. Instead of seeing the broken things, you see all the little bits of genius that anonymous designers have sweated over to make our lives better. And that's essentially the definition of design, making life better and providing joy. And few things give me greater joy than a well-designed flag. Okay, so this was about, uh, it was a little less than a minute, this little snippet of, of radio that he does. So it's very well thought out and he mixes the music and the uh, sound snippets and he all mixes it seamlessly. It's very well rehearsed. I'm sure he took a lot of time to make sure that this is flawless, that this went perfectly well. Um, however, in this last bit, it was less than a minute, but he sort of lost me a little bit because his voice is so soothing, so smooth, and a little, maybe just a little too soporific for me. I kind of lose it, I go wander off and start dreaming about all kinds of 
unicorns and rainbows. So for me, that, that he kind of lost me there. That's, that's too bad. I'm sure that it works very well for radio, but I know next to nothing about radio in particular, but it, I'm sure it works very well for radio or even an audio book, for instance. I can imagine that it works really well, that his voice is very pleasant in those kinds of situations. But for a presentation, I, I just find it a little hard to, to keep focused. But if you don't agree with that, you know, voices are, it's very personal. It's very, very subjective stuff. Unless you talk like this, then, you know, you should work on that. Because no one really likes that. Um, let's see the second, the third, third little bit that I have here. Here he really starts working with the equipment. He really starts playing around with it. The five basic principles of flag design. According to the North American Vexillological Association. Vexillological. Vexillology is the study of flags. It's that extra law that makes it sound weird. Number one, keep it simple. The flag should be so simple that a child can draw it from memory. I love it. I, it's, I am a sucker for form. You can, you're, you can know that. I just love a concept presentation. Because, you know, there is something about it that just, you understand it. You know what it's about rather than, oh, I do have no idea what it, where this is going, you know. If once you find the gimmick in it, once you find the game in it, then, then you can, you, you're in it, you follow it, you know what's going to happen. And it's, I, I really like it. And you can really see the effort he put into this. This is the story around it. This is what a story can be. Kind of the, yeah, the form or the gimmick of, uh, of a presentation. Apart from being very well thought out, he's also very funny. He's a funny guy. He really knows how to use his humor. Um, so in this bit, he and his recordings are analyzing San Francisco's flag. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. In war, plus, and this is the big problem. It says San Francisco across the bottom. If you need to write the name of what you're representing on your flag, your symbolism has failed. Yes. That little inflection that he does, I, that works very well just because he has such a you know, mellow voice. And he just kind of goes like that, like a little brook. And, and then he just, it's a San Francisco on the bottom. You know, that inflection, that works very well. And he knows that. I'm sure that he knows that. And that is my big lesson for today as well to you guys. Make sure that you know how you sound so that you can use it. You know, knowing yourself is the first thing you want to do if you want to start giving presentations, knowing how the audience may see you. And he knows that, and he uses that as a, com a comedy tool. So very nicely done. It's funny. He's a funny guy. Then this next part, this, it's a perfectly lovely presentation. It really is. All of it, it's super nice. But here he does, he does hurt me a little bit. It's still a nice presentation, but this is, this pains me. The five basic principles of flag design. Number one. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Number two. Use meaningful symbolism. Number three. Well, it's not even, it's not even about, the, about the sound of this. This is, yeah, hurtful. Hurtful for me. Because, first of all, I don't need this. I really don't need this slide. There, I, at no point, I was craving something to read, something to help me remember the five steps or the five things every flag needs. See, I don't even remember it now. So it doesn't help. It's, I, I, I don't need this. It's, it was perfectly lovely with just photos of flags and images of that. And then, then this. Secondly, it's, it's ugly. It's 
for a design or a presentation about design, this is very, very poorly designed. There's way too much text on it, and it's just, it just doesn't look very appealing. So this, this is a bummer for me. He could have done, if he really, really wanted to use these five different elements, these five steps, these five bullet points, he could have kind of put it into the whole presentation, you know, here and there, uh, spread it out a little bit, because rule number one, when it comes to slides, there's another lesson for me to you. When it comes to slides, your audience needs to be able to read it in one glance. If you cannot read something in one glance, it has absolutely no business being on a slide in a presentation. That's just uh, some free advice from me to you. Because, you know, when your audience has to read, they stop listening. As simple as that. They either read or they listen. Never both at the same time. So then better make sure they keep listening to you. But I do want to end this thing on a bit of a happier note. A happier note. So here we go. The last bit, um, I really, I just really enjoyed this. It was just very nice. If you see your city flag and like it, fly it. Even if it violates a design rule or two, I don't care. But if you don't see your city flag, maybe it doesn't exist, but maybe it does, and it just sucks. And I dare you to join the effort to try to change that. As we move more and more into cities, the city flag will become not just a symbol of that city as a place, but also it could become a symbol of how that city considers design itself, especially today as the populace is becoming more design aware. And I think design awareness is at an all time high. A well All right, that's enough of that little snippet. Because why I like this so much is that he's bringing this as kind of a a powerful call to action. So if you see your city flag and you like it, buy it. Um, it's, it's funny because it's kind of a dorky subject, of course. We all know that and he knows that and that's why he does this this way. So, you know, it's kind of putting something in another context. So this is almost a battlefield uh, speech, you know, getting people... Uh, all excited about something, and it's about flags. So I I like kind of putting something like that in a different context, and that is what makes it funny. That's what makes what makes the comedy here. All right, guys, stop share the screen. There we go. That's me again. Um. So takeaways from this from this particular presentation, I love the fact that it is a concept talk. I really do, because there's a very distinct form to it, and I love form, I do, I really love it. Um, for me, his voice was a little bit too low energy. That's a pity, I would have liked it to be, you know, that it would really take me with him a little bit more rather than being like an audiobook, because there is a difference between a presentation and an audiobook, apparently. That's the way I feel about this. Um, it does, you know, it's a bit hypnotic. And that's just, for me, not that effective to teach. And in most presentations, you want to teach your audience something. So it's lovely to entertain, but not really to teach. Nonetheless, it's, um, you know, he managed to make something that is kind of dorky um, for a lot of people seems like a very boring subject. He made that very, very exciting and very interesting and fun. So he did a very good job at that. And so take that away from it as well, that even, even you with maybe your boring annual financial numbers or whatever kind of presentation you might have to give in the future, it can be done to put that in a story. You can do that. Okay, and if you're not yet part of the Presenters to Storytellers Facebook group, come and join us and learn a lot more about storytelling and pitching and presenting. All right, and if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe there. There, I think. See ya.